Hello everyone and welcome to Unitronics webinar. My name is Ophir Levy and I'm the head of the technical support in Unitronics and here with me Mr. Alona Vivi, our support engineer. Today's webinar will be about Unitronics VFDs, Unitronics inverters. Before we will start, uh, I will have a few words about Unitronics. Unitronics was established in 1989, and we are the pioneer and leader of the all-in-one PLC with HMI. We have 180 distributors in more over than over 60 countries, over 1 million installations worldwide in different industries, such as packaging, water treatment, pharmaceutical, plastic, textile, and more. Unitronics manufacture over 1,000 1, PLCs per day, and we have large and loyal recurrent businesses with OEMs and machine builders. We have one unified programming environment to program our PLCs, write the code, design the HMI screen, configure the communication and IOs, and more. We are offering four product lines of the PLCs. PLCs for small applications, up to PLCs for more complex and advanced projects and applications. Our high-end series of controller, the Unistream, can be expanded over 2,000 IOs. Unitronics provides the software and the support at no cost. Anyone can call our support department, can contact us by email for any question, for any help and assistance they need. Today, as I mentioned, we will focus on the VFD. And later on, we will show how easy and intuitive it is to build application in Unilogic, the programming environment for our Unistream series PLCs. So we will see some specifications about our Unistream PLCs. We have them in three versions. We'll start with the Unistream modular. As you can see here, the Unistream modular comes in three sizes of panel, 7 inch, 10 inch, and 15 inch. We can snap on the back of the panels the CPU, IO modules, and communication modules. Of course, you can use our expansion adapters to expand more IO. It is not a must to put the IO on the back of the panel. You can always use the expansion adapters to put them on a DIN rail inside the cabinet. As you can see, the 10-inch model is available also in a multi-touch version. Unistream support many features and many communication protocols, such as Ethernet IP, web server, sending SMS and email, remote accessing via VNC, FTP for file transfer protocol, SQL for communicating with databases, and MQTT for exchanging data with the cloud. And this is just few of the protocols that we support. We support much more. These are the Unistream built-in PLCs. When we say built-in, we mean that these units has a built-in I.O. So it's a one unit with the CPU, HMI, and I.O. and communication ports all in one unit. As you can see, they come in two sizes, 5 inch and 7 inch, with same resolution, 800 and 480, coming in two versions, standard and pro, and supporting all the communication protocols I mentioned before, and these PLCs are, can also be expanded using our expand, expansion adapters for having more IOs. 
And last one, and not least, the Unistream PLC. This is the first PLC Unitronics manufacturer without an HMI. You can see here the PLC. It has no HMI, it has built-in I.O., it has communication ports. It can be expanded with more I.O. modules that can be connected to the right of the controller and we can connect, as you can see here, also communication modules to the left of the controller. We can expand it also with the expansion adapters to add more I.O.s. And as you can see here, we said that there is no physical HMI, but it has a virtual HMI. What is the virtual HMI means? This means that when you build the application in our programming environment, we still let you build your HMI screens. Then you can use your mobile, tablet, Unitronics uh, displays. You see, we supply also uh, two sizes of uh, displays, seven and five inch, or you can pick one of the panels from the modular series to connect to the Unistream PLC by VNC and control the HMI like you are standing next to it. In addition, you can also build uh, web server pages and also control the PLC via the web server. And today's topic is Unitronics VFDs. As you know, usually you control by VFDs, pumps, motors for fans, for pumps, and many other applications like conveyors and so on. Let's see some specifications of our VFDs. We have uh, EMC building filters. Again, as you can see, it's a model dependent. You can always see it in the catalog, which ones has it uh, as a built-in. For the, for the very small ones, it's not built-in, but of course, when you go up uh, to more power, it's, uh, it's a built-in. We have different mounting options like flange, like DIN rail. The temperature environment can go from minus 10 up to plus 50. Supporting built-in Modbus, but we can see later that uh, when you connect it to Unitronics PLCs, either Samba, Vision, or Unistream, uh, you don't care about the Modbus because it's implemented in the software and integrated. Breaking units, which are built-in, again, depending on the model. You can control both speed and torque. We have heavy duty overload capacity, meaning that if uh, there is an overload, uh, we can see later in the specifications how, how long you can be in situation of overload. STO, safe talk off, standard for this, uh, uh, the EU, we can see it in a moment, the EU VFDs, and uh, uh, also remote accessing and controlling the VFDs via our PLC. Here we can see some uh, specifications. So we can see the input voltage uh, supporting uh, single phase and three phase from 200 volt up to 400 volts. So depending on the country, you can pick the VFD that uh, you need. Frequency from, again, 50 and 60 hertz. Supporting uh, asynchronous motors and also permanent magnet synchronous motors for the B5 model. Output frequency from zero to 400 hertz. And here is the overload capacity I mentioned before, which, uh, for example, you can see if uh, the overload is 150%, you can still work like this in 60 seconds. So this means that when you pick the VFD, if you know that on startup, you will have an overload for uh, two, three, five seconds. Uh, you don't have to pick a very uh, larger VFD power. You can still pick the one that uh, um, 
good for the application because we can still have an overload for a specific time. In terms of control, uh, we are supporting uh, space vector PWM and sensorless vector. Under the communication, as I mentioned, uh, supporting Modbus and supporting also the option to control the VFD via digital inputs and analog input, having a built-in PID control and also can be controlled by high speed. We can see here the inputs and outputs. So depending on the dif uh, difference between the versions, you can see that the B5 has more inputs and outputs, but um, for example, for analog uh, inputs supporting zero to 10 volt and uh, zero to 20 milliamperes, if you would like to control the frequency by analog input, uh, by digital inputs, as I mentioned before, you can use them and configure the VFD um, for starting it, for stopping it, uh, and many other functionalities. We have some outputs that can be used for indicating uh, some, some status of the VFD um, or, or to output uh, to know what is the frequency that is currently used by analog output and many more configurations that you can find in the user manual. We have a dynamic braking unit. You can see that uh, depending on the size of the VFD, uh, we will see later on that uh, we have also, uh, we, we supply also accessories. Uh, if, you, if you would like to use a, a braking resistor, you can also use it. The EMC uh, filter building and the rest we already spoke before. Now let's uh, talk about the capabilities of UniLogic, the programming environment for the UniStream and the VFD. So in general, we will see later on how easy it is to program our VFDs. Uh, you can instantly add the VFD, link it to the serial port, the RS485 port in the program, create the configurations, and then download the configuration to the VFD in runtime. Uh, this is a, a very great feature. You can use our leather VFD blocks to send command to the VFD, to start, to change frequency, to stop, to run in talk mode, to reset error and more. This, of course, as I mentioned, you don't need to know anything about the addressing of the VFD because everything is integrated in our software. And you can also get the statuses automatically, meaning uh, what is the current frequency, what is the current uh, torque and, and, and more by just setting a bit that will automatically start reading all these statuses from the VFD. So as I mentioned, um, very easily, we'll see it in a moment. Uh, you can just configure your, your communication port, select the VFD family, link it to the serial port, create a configuration, then use the letter blocks. Here we can see how the configuration looks like. So, have all the parameters of the VFD can be easily accessed from this grid in our software. So you can configure it. And then later on by sending one command, we can send the configuration to the VFD instead of uh, typing uh, using the keys of the VFD to enter parameter by parameter, which takes a lot of time. We can even import and export the configuration, meaning that once you created your configuration and then you wish to use it on another project, you can just import it, import it uh, without the need to do it from scratch. Here we can see the letter VFD blocks. 
supporting many types of uh, commands to the VFD. And as I mentioned before, we have a struct for the VFD to enable the communication, to get some uh, indications whether the VFD is connected or not, uh, whether I, if I want to read all the data from the VFD so I can set this bit, enable periodic, and automatically the status array will be filled with all the values and getting more statistics to know how the performance of the VFD and more. So this was the presentation part. Now I just want to take you to our portal. In our support portal, you can find a lot of articles in regards to VFDs, how to calculate the breaking resistors, dimensions, weight, how to use the keypad, uh, cable lengths between VFD and motors, many articles that will help you to work with our VFDs. Uh, I just opened uh, one of the important articles, which is the quick start guide. So meaning that when first you take out a VFD out of the box, we provide here uh, very quick steps what you should do in order to get communication with the VFD. So if, if we just go very quick, we can see here how to wire uh, the motor that, uh, again, the motor is not from Unitronics, but you can motor the, you can, sorry, wire the motor either in a star or a delta. Uh, later on, we can see here how uh, to connect the VFD to our PLC in terms of RS-485 how to connect the motor to the VFD, and how to earth. Explanation about the keypad. Of course, you get, you have in, the, in our user manual, you have uh, much more uh, detailed information, but we just wanted to create a quick guide so it will be easily handled. Um, as you know, every time you start to work with the VFD, you have to take a look on the motor plate to get uh, the power, the frequency, the speed, all the limitation of the, of the motor, and then enter these parameters in the VFD. In addition, we have to set the Modbus ID, okay? because we can, con can, we can connect several VFDs on the same RS-485 port. So each one of them will get different ID. And we will have to uh, change if we want to control the VFD by Modbus and not by analog or by keypad, we'll have to change two uh, parameters, which is uh, uh, 0, 0 0.01, set it to 2 in order to communicate with Modbus. This is uh, the control command and the frequency source command will be uh, program 00.06. Uh, we'll have to put it on the value eight in order to have the frequency source from Modbus. It is recommended to perform auto-tuning to get the best performance. And here under the communication, uh, the default is basically as you can see here, 19200, uh, 8 even 1. Uh, you can leave it as a default. If you want to change it, it's also possible to do it via uh, program 14, the group 14. Okay, this is, was just a quick look on the uh, uh, quick guide. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is uh, in our website, under products, motion control, you can find the VFD page. Uh, you can find some here, some information. Uh, if I will scroll all the way down, you can download from here the user manuals, uh, the brochure. Okay, one moment. So,
Yeah, so here you can get the product specifications, okay, for each one of them even. And um, you can get here the filter installation guidance specification, the user manuals, the additional accessories that we provide, and the brochure. I just opened the additional accessories uh, page, and you can see that you can uh, uh, purchase uh, a keypad if you want to uh, control the VFD uh, remotely by keypad the filters, part numbers, and the braking resistors, and the flange mounting options. Okay, in addition, I also opened here the user manual. So basically, in the user manual, you can find all the information about the VFD, starting from installation, wiring, programming and and more okay so now it's the time to open unilogic and we will start building an example application for vfd so i will hand over now to alon avivi that will build the application for the vfd thank you alon Thank you, Ophir. Good morning, everybody. So we just opened uh, Unilogic. Let's go to the Solution Explorer. Motion drives, VFD. And double click on the VFD uh, family that we're going to use. A new line with the VFD will be added. We can change here the Modbus ID for the VFD. We can change the name here. And we need to set the communication channel to the VFD. So again, I will go to the Solution Explorer, PLC Communication, Serial Com, and on the right side, I will change my communication to a VFD. And here are the default parameters. Each time you will take the VFD out of the box, this will be the default parameters. So boundary will be 19200, and parity check will be 8 even 1. OK, as uh, Ophir mentioned, we can change those parameters via group 14. We we'll press close and go back to the VFD, select the communication channel. And now we will select a specific, a specific VFD. As we said, we also have uh, the option to add uh, a configuration file to the VFD. So for that, I will select my specific VFD that I'm working with. And today we will work with the UMI 0007BE on B1 uh, series. I will double click on it, press on the configuration file. And I can see here all the parameters that I have in the VFD. A very, uh, a very unique feature that we have here is a modified parameter. For example, if I would like to change a, a specific parameter and work with all uh, the defaults, I can, for example, come here to the speed control and change it from working sensorless vector control. I will change it from zero to one, <clears throat> I can also change, for example, the max output uh, frequency, okay? And if I will go now to the modified parameters, you can see here 
that they changed uh, only one parameter, and we will see later on <clears throat> how we can download that specific uh, parameter very quickly in our uh, application. Of course, uh, you can see here all the list of uh, parameters that can be adjusted, acceleration for the, for the VFD, deceleration time. We can see here all the motor parameters that we saw that is listed on the motor plate. So we have the, we have the power, we have the rated frequency that the motor is working with, what is the speed, what is the voltage, that uh, the VFD and uh, the motor uh, will use, and so on and so on. With group five, for example, we can see uh, if we will decide to work with, uh, with terminal control, for example, we can set uh, the settings for each one of the digital uh, inputs. So for example, the default for S1 is uh, forward rotation, and if I will see all the options that we have here, so I can change it to reverse rotation, I can set it to cost and to stop, for example, or I can even uh, set it to fault reset in case that I will have a uh, fault in the VFD and I would like to reset it from, uh, from our digital input. So just for our example, I will change it to reverse rotation and I will go back to the modified parameters and you will see that the second line was added to my uh, modified parameters. Okay, <clears throat> so at this point, we will continue to our, uh, to our ladder and let's see how easy it to add uh, the VFD. Uh, we already, once we added the VFD, we can see it under uh, the IO that my, that the VFD struct was added. And we have, uh, we see that we will need to enable the communication to the VFD. We have an option, as Ophir mentioned, to enable a bit to read all the statuses from the VFD. Okay, so let's start. So the first thing that I would like to do would be to once power up, we go to general on first initial cycle, I would like to enable communication to the VFD. Okay, so I will use a set coil, go to my VFD struct and enable communication. I will also would like to enable the reader periodic for the statuses. So again, we go to VFD and enable periodic status read. Okay, so here, first time that the BLC would be powered, both uh, bits will be, will be set. Later on, we will see that we have to option to check that the VFD is actually connected uh, and there is communication between the VFD and, uh, and the PLC. Okay, next I would like to download the modified parameters that I have uh, changed. So we will take a direct contact for our condition and the reset coil, and that would be my write modified. Okay, and if I will go to the toolbox, write VFD, as we saw in the presentation, I have all the options for the function blocks for the VFD and I will select VFD write modified parameters, put it here, copy my tag for the reset, and here, let's see the options that we have here. So first of all, A will tell us what is the VFD that you would like to work with. So we will press here and select VFD1. Of course, that if we will add more and more uh, VFDs, 
the list will be longer. Okay, and <clears throat> here we should add uh, the file name. So basically, it's this one configuration file. You have the option to to paste uh, a constant configuration file name, or you can read it from uh, from a data table. For now, we will just write it as a constant. And we will add status to our command. So let's call it status modified. Okay, so this is my first function block that I'm adding. Um, at this point, I would like to add a run VFD and, uh, and the stop VFD commands. So again, I can take, I can add the condition. Okay. And this will be run VFD. And again, going to the toolbox, we have here VFD run frequency mode. Okay, again, A will indicate for which VFD would you like to run. Okay, and what is the frequency that we would like uh, to run in? Again, it can be a constant and form a tag. At this point, let's edit it from from a tag, it will be frequency run VFD. And here at C, we have the option to select the direction. If we set it to zero, it will be forward. If it will be one, it will be reverse. Again, it can come from a tag or a constant. We can leave it in zero. And of course, add the status. And add us run VFD. Okay, so we enabled run VFD. Now we would like to stop the VFD. Again, I will add a condition here. It will be stop VFD and again go to the toolbox and select stop VFD again A will be selecting the specific VFD that I would like to stop and add the status okay this point, let's continue to the to the HMI and configure our um, buttons for uh, writing modified parameters, a run VFD, stop VFD, and we will also add an, a numeric box to to add the the frequency that we would like to work. With. So double click on button. And the first one we go to is action, add an action, set bit, and our tag will be write modified. Let's change the description. We'll call it write modified parameters. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's add a second button. And that will be our run VFD. We'll go to the properties window, add an action, run VFD. Let's change the color 
to a green one and also change the description run VFD. Okay, let's add a third one for stop. Go to the properties window, add an action, stop VFD, change the description, and also change the color to red for example. Okay. Uh, we need to add also a numeric box for, uh, for our uh, running frequency. So from the toolbox, we go to numeric elements, double click on numeric box. Let's place it in front of the run VFD. Okay. And I will, from the properties window, I will disable the run only because I would like to edit the parameter and link it to our frequency that we are going to work with. I will just change the format here since the VFD frequency resolution is up to 100. I will add two, numeric, two <clears throat> decimal point location. And after text, I can write Hertz and we can also add a nice label. So from the text element, we'll take a fixed text and we can write set frequency. Okay, so at this point, I would like to download um, the application to my PLC. So let's go to PLC. Press download, and we will open uh, VNC viewer. Okay, we just finished the download. Okay, we we'll finish the download and we will see, we'll check in online mode that uh, our VFD is connected, is on to verify that we have communication between the VFD and the PLC. Okay, finish the download. I will open a VNC. Okay, and let's press on one. I will set here frequency that I would like to work with. Run VFD. And let's go online mode and see if our VFD is connected. You can see here that the enable communication bit is on, VFD is connected, is on, and enable periodic status read is on. Okay, let's take it down. And at this point, Let's stop the VFD and let's add reading 
statuses of the VFD, okay? Because I want to make sure that my VFD is running. So I will add a numeric uh, boxes. One will be for the actual frequency that the VFD is, is running, okay? So I will keep it in read only because I'm just reading the frequency and we'll go to the tag that it is, link it to the VFD that we are working in, go to status and link it to output frequency. Okay, we can add here hertz as well. And of course, change the format. Okay, and a second numeric box will be for the motor speed. So we'll add a second numeric box. And let's link it to VFD status and motor speed. We can write here RPM. And of course, we can add the uh, fixed uh, text and write here running frequency. and also motor speed. Okay, let's download and start our uh, VFD and see the parameters. Okay, let's open the VNC. Start run VFD and you can see here the running, the actual running frequency and in parallel <coughs> the motor speed in RPM. Okay, once it reaches 20 Hertz that I set here, now I would like to change it. Let's write 30, for example, run VFD, and you see that the frequency is changing. Now, in addition, I would like to show you that I also have the option to change uh, some of the parameters that we saw in the co configuration file. For example, I would like to change the acceleration that the changing uh, speed will be much uh, faster. So we go back to the application. Let's go out of online mode and add Okay, we will add a condition. And this one will be change acceleration. And again, we'll go to the toolbox, right here VFD. And I will select VFD right parameter <clears throat> direct, which is the most fastest way. Again, in A, I will select, which is the VFD parameter that I would like uh, to use. So I will go here to VFD one. I know that changing acceleration is under basic function uh, group. I will select it and I will select here 
ACC time one. And here I just need to add a value. Again, it can be a constant or it can be a tag. Let's add it as a tag. So that will be acceleration time. And of course, add the status to our command. And let's go to the HMI and also add a button. We will call it change ACC and also add an action, change acceleration. And of course, we need to link it to a numeric box for the value. So from the properties window, we will disable the read only and link it to our tag, which is ACC time. And I know that the acceleration time is in uh, tenth of a second. So I will just change the location of the decimal point. And let's download it. Okay, we will we will start and stop the VFD and change the acceleration time, and you will see the effective. In Of course, this value also can be can be read from our uh, from the VFD status. Let's go to our VNC. Stop the VNC, the the motto, and let's change our acceleration. Let's make it a very fast one. One second change acceleration and start the VFD. And you see that in one second, um, the VFD reaches the, the frequency that we, that we set. Of course, the acceleration time is, uh, is calculated according to the max frequency in our configuration uh, file and just for show you the differences. Let's select a very long acceleration. So 100 seconds, for example, we will write it and start the VFD and you see here the difference. So basically, I changed the acceleration time to 100 seconds and you can see here that the VFD is taking the time to reach it. Okay, thank you very much at this point. Okay, thank you, Alon. Uh, as you could see, programming our VFDs in Unilogic environment is very easy, very intuitive. As I mentioned at the beginning, our VFDs are also supported in VisiLogic, which is the programming environment for Samba and Vision Series. Just to point, we didn't show you all the functions of the VFD, but you could see here from the toolbox, we are supporting more functions like jogging, running in torque mode, resetting faults, activating autotune, reading and writing parameters, and even reading and writing the configuration files. I would like to thank you all for joining us to this webinar. I hope that you found it very interesting and informative.
Thank you again.